Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's another deck, it's another day, it's another deck tech, and I'm hoping you've hit the subscribe button. I'm hoping at the end of this video you will hit the like button because this deck has been through quite a bit of changes. Um, I'm going to be honest, this is the second time I've recorded this video, and then I played the deck on my stream and I didn't like it. And luckily, my moderators, um, Kedant came up with some really good ideas for the deck to make it better. So I went back, I changed the deck, and now I'm re recording it. So, do you want to know what the deck is? I'm hoping you do, because you're still here. So, the deck is Eluna, Apex of Wishes. Two green, blue, and red for a 6 6 flying trample creature that's beast elemental dinosaurs, legendary, obviously, but it has a really unique ability. Whenever you mutate this creature, Exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent. Put that card onto the battlefield or into your hand. Now, usually, nowadays, with things that exile things, you usually get to put all the ones you haven't used on the bottom of your library in a random order. Not this one. You exile them, they're gone permanently. Which makes this really challenging, because you want to hit a permanent. And the permanent that we really want to hit, as you can imagine, is... Omniscience. This is the only permanent in the deck that isn't a land or isn't our commander of Luna. The reason for it is when we mutate Luna, we want to hit this and make sure we can start going off there and then. So, how are we going to do this? Well, it's a little bit of a challenge, but the deck looks like this. Whoops. Well, it looked like this more if I could show it more. There we go. Right. So, what we've got to have is some creatures in play to mutate this onto. And the easiest way to do this is with tokens. So, we've got a fairly strong token theme and then we've got a few things that we need to do that are going to help us get there to make sure that when we do mutate Eluna we are hitting omniscience off the top and not exiling 60 cards 70 cards um, if you watch the stream replay from a Sunday a few weeks ago you can see this deck it was in action you can see that I ended up with a card deck of 20 and that's before I did the changes hence why I've re-recorded the video because the changes do make it that much more significantly better so Mana base, let's start there. Notice there's no artifacts in here. As I said, the only permanent that's in the deck, apart from a Luna who's in the command zone, is Omniscience. And that's how we've got to keep it. So, loads and loads of green, blue, and red lands. Um, command Tower, Dream Root Cascade. And then a few things that will produce tokens. So, Dwarf and Mine. We've got enough mountains in the deck to make sure we do get the um, Dwarf if we play it at the right time. If we need to play it early, so be it. But, you know, we've got enough mountains to make it work. Obviously, Field of the Dead's in here. Zombies are a great target for a mutation. Um, we've all seen the zombie films where things get mutated, so that's why this is here. We've also got Kalani Garden. Uh, that obviously comes into play, gives us a plant token. It also helps towards the mutate value for Iluna, so, you know, all well and good there. Cobalt Care Keep, so we can make some kobolds to mutate onto. If you know, nothing else happens, we can put it on a kobold. Um, again, it's not a particularly cheap way of doing it, but it does work. Beyond that, the other ones we've got are Sokensky, however you say that, so Sokenzan, Crucible of Defiance. Uh, we can channel this, get the two colourless spirit tokens at the end of someone's turn, and then get ready to do the whole mutate trick with Aluna on the next turn. And the last one, which I'll point out, which I'm not overly sure how this works, but we can turn Blinkmoth Nexus into a creature, obviously, and then mutate onto that. If you're going to have seven mana, hopefully you've already got something better than that, but you do need seven mana to do this. Well, Blinkmoth plus six other lands to do the mutate trick. Because mutate, mutate for Illuna, which I didn't say earlier, is two blue, and then a green and a red plus three. And because you've got no artifacts to ramp with, you need to make sure you've got that land available to do it with. So, bear that in mind. But you can do it with Blink Moth if you've got seven lands in play for some reason and no other tokens. So, let's have a look at the rest of the deck. The rest of the deck is all spells and inst is all sorceries and instants. There's, like I say, no other permanents apart from Omniscience. And it's been a tricky deck to put together. But, thank you to Cadence. We came up with some good plans and it probably has made... Well, it's not probably. I know it's made the deck work better. So... First things first, Brainstorm to manipulate the top of our library. A lot of things are going to be manipulating. We're going to be looking at Scry. So we've got Brainstorm, Opt, Preordain, Serum Visions. I put them all in that. Let's manipulate the top of our library. Um, we want to do it, if we do Scry, we want to make sure Omniscience isn't going into our hand. So 
that's a little bit trickier but we can do it there are ways around it one of the big things we have got is mystical tutor you're probably wondering why mystical tutor is here i'm coming to it believe me first bit of board controls next we've got cyclonic rift to bounce everything in sight see beyond um is quite nice it gives us a way to put omniscience back into our hand if we get it into play if we actually draw it at some stage by mistake when we can't cast it so keep hold of your see beyond in case that happens counter spell and manage rain give us a little bit of counter backup along with forceful denial i've played forceful denial because that does cascade and we can hit one of the other things we may need hence why it's here but yeah just so you know we've got three counters Dragon Fodder and Krenko's Command do exactly the same thing for exactly the same mana cost, exactly the same speed. Both give you two goblins. Chatterstorm's here as well. well. There is a point where we do play a lot of instants. We do play sort of like a lot of cantrippy things or we do play a lot of other things and we do occasionally end up with two mana left at the end of the turn. And if we played a couple of spells, get some squirrel tokens to mutate onto. It's not a bad plan. Also, if you've got had a big turn where you've had a Luna, you've got Omniscience, you've cast all these spells, Chatterstorm is great because it will just give you enough blockers that you can win the next turn. Um, so, yeah, just bear that in mind. File Seeks here is a little bit of searching out ramp along with Rampant Growth, Scrying, Three Visits. They're all there to go and search lands out. Now, we are playing six basic lands in the whole deck, um, hence why it's here, but we've played a lot of the new dual lands where you've got Forest as a subtype. So really, three visits, Sylvan Scrying and Farseek are all here to go and get something like, I don't know, Ketra Triome, for example. Or, you know, in the case of Sylvan Scrying, you're probably going to go and get your field, you're dead with it. Rampant Growth here, just to go and get basic the way we may be missing. Verdant Catacombs does a similar thing, gives us a couple of squirrels at the end of our you know, before the start of our turn. And we gain a couple of life if we need to, so, you know, that's always good. And Growth Spiral, draw. Put, a new, put an extra land into play, like that plan. Dream Catch is next. Um, draw three cards, then put two cards from your hand on the bottom or the top of your library. Also gives you a oh, you know, top or bottom of the library. Also gives you a way to put um, Omniscience back on top of your library in the order you want. Likewise, the reason we have Mystical Tutor in the deck is to give us a chance of getting long-term plans. This is something that CAD's put me onto, and I've just worked out it's the only real way you've got of searching out omniscience to make sure it's where you want it to be. Um, so the plan would be at the end of your opponent's turn, Mystical Tutor, get the long-term plans on top of your library, draw long-term plans. At the end of your opponent's next turn, uh, cast long-term plans, put omniscience third from top. And then go in and do the mutate on Iluna. And that should work. That saves all the problem of losing all your libraries you go through it. Now, on MTGO, this deck is currently sitting around about 48, 49 tickets. In real life, it's sitting about $12,500. And the reason for that is one card. It's Time Twister. Take it out. Just lose it. You don't need it. I've put it in here because I've got one in MTGO. And it's a nice way of um, recycling our library that we need. Because you know, obviously I'm not playing Immortal um, Elixir of Immortality in this deck for obvious reasons. Windfall is quite good, cheap way of doing it. Same idea, um, but bear it in mind. And then Wheel of Fortune is also the other expensive card. This is sitting around about 300 at the moment. So if you drop these both out, the deck goes down to quite a reasonable real life value. Bear that in mind. Cultivate to go and get a couple of the other basics along with Search of Tomorrow. Um, Prismari command so we can filter through our deck and get a treasure token to help us get out Iluna a little bit quicker. And Quandrix command really is just to shuffle anything back into our library where we may have boo-booed and basically bounce something. I've kept it in, I quite like it. The rest of the cards really are about when we've got Omniscience in place. We've got Glimmer of Genius, so that does help with the whole scrying bit. Bear that in mind. Um, draw card. I've played Mythos of Iluna because we're playing Iluna, so we might as well play the Mythos that goes along with them. Um, and it is quite nice because you can actually copy someone's artifacts if you need some sort of ramp to make sure you get there. Use it to copy your opponent's artifacts. Bear that in mind. Mizzix's Mastery. Key card. Once we've got played all our instants and sorceries and we've got them out, we need to do it from the graveyard. So, yeah, that's why Mizzix is here. Pirate's Pillage, discard, draw, get some treasure, throws a chaos, gives us a cascade so we can hit some of these things down here if we need to. Chain Reaction to control the board, unexpected wheel for, windfall, same as Pirate's Pillage really, just 
instant instead of sorcery. So, you know, but different, slightly different mana cost. Curious Herd I'm trying out. There's a lot of artifact decks getting around at the moment. Getting some token beasts is quite nice, especially at instant speed. Um, surprise blockers are always fun in Commander. Well, I think they are. Eureka Moment, extra land and a couple of draws. The Forceful Denial I've mentioned as a part of the counter package. Reverse Engineer, draw three cards. This is something you will only do when you've got Omniscience out because you've got no artifacts. You can't do the improvised bit. Burn down the house is twofold. Bit more board control, especially if there's someone playing lots of planeswalkers. This takes care of them. Um, but it also gives you, if you're really stuck, it gives you the three devil tokens that you might need to get something to, you know, so you can mutate onto one of them. Bear it in mind. Primal Command gives you a way to recycle your graveyard into your library. If it gets that far, or bounce something, it will gain some life. There's no point. The fourth ability on here, you haven't got any creatures in the deck, so it's irrelevant from this point of view. Invoke the Ancients is something you really want to play as many times as you can. Um, just to get those spirit tokens, they're quite beefy, they do help you win the game. And that's what I'm going for with this, is using Invoke the Ancients as many times as I can when I'm drawing my deck with Omniscience to get a whole board presence. Now, I haven't got any way to give anything in here haste. That may be an oversight. It is something you can replace Eureka Moment for. I'm still thinking about it. Um, so there may be a note in the deck description down below saying this card's gone this has replaced it just so you know but i'll make sure the deck list is up to date if i do change it urban evolution draw three play an extra land dragon lords um just to draw four really um sahili's artistry the same as our other lovely copy thing on mythos of the lunar copy an artifact copy a creature it gives you a blocker maybe something good especially if they've got something that's indestructible yeah Devil's Playground is an expensive way of getting four devils into play, so you've got illu so you've got mutate targets, and Tiana's commands a nice way of doing it because you can go and do your whole um, exile a player's graveyard and get a couple of basic lands, or get the two bear tokens you may need. It's probably one of the first three. The last one irrelevant in this deck unless you've somehow managed to get a whole horde of tokens, in which case, yeah, pumping them up is a really good plan. Almonds of Epiphany is a controversial card, I'm sure. Um, but it's the extra turn and the two tokens it produces when you actually cast it. And I would probably foretell it as soon as I can to get it out of my hand and then cast it when I've got the six mana. It's one of those things that I would look at doing, so bear it in mind. Overwhelming Insight is just a big card draw spell, and it is possible that you can you know cycle this through through a few uh, through a few times excuse my tongue twister, and yeah, mill an opponent out by giving them in in making them draw, draw their entire deck with it. It's possible. The main ways of winning are here. Elemental Masterpiece to get the blue and red elemental tokens. Creative Outburst to deal 5 damage, which you're going to hopefully repeat when you shuffle everything back into your library. Um, Genesis Ultimatum is just fun. It's another way of getting your Omniscience into play by looking at the top 5 cards of your library. Um, you're going to either end up with a handful of spells and lands and get all the lands into play, or you're going to hit Omniscience and do it. But it's another way to do it, hence why it's here. Treasure Cruise, you want to play it once you've got Omniscience in play. If you're desperate for cards or you need to do something to make sure you stay in the game, then yes, feel free to delve away your, lab, um, your graveyard, but you want to try and keep it until you've got the Omniscience out. Magma Opus is quite fun. Um, again, another way, fall damage to something, a couple of creatures, get tap a couple of permanents, draw a couple of cards. Nothing wrong with this as a win con. We've got Spring to Mine as well, basic land search, and then a couple of cards. Just one thing I will say, Aftermath does not trigger from your graveyard, doesn't trigger omniscience, you have to pay for them, so bear that in mind. I'm not sure how else it works, but I think you can do it other ways, but we'll see. Blasphemous Act, obviously, to control the board. And Clone Legion is something you want to draw once Omniscience is in play and copy the biggest part of the board that's available to you because, you know, you get their creatures, you can do things with them. That's always fun. Obviously, Omniscience is here at top end. And then the last thing, Commit to Memory. Um, it's another way of shuffling our graveyard back into our hand. Yes, this gets exiled afterwards. But if you've done an early time Twister or Wheel of Fortune, shuffling them back into your library, not the worst plan in the world, just to keep restoing your library. You know, build up a big storm camp for Chatterstorm or something. But that's it. That's my take on Eluna, Apex of Wishes. Um... Yeah, it worked really quite well this afternoon. I was close to winning if I hadn't exiled all the sort of like two, three quarters of my deck got exiled when I did the original Mutate. So 
but I still had enough cards in my deck. I was cycling through them doing things. So it did work quite well. So it's a bit of a challenge to play this deck. I suspect there are some win conditions I've missed out, which I'm sure someone in the chat will tell me about. Um, in the chat, sorry. In the comments, let me know. I did think about two other permanents in here, but I didn't want to risk exiling too much of my graveyard. I did think about Thousand Year Storm, and I did think about Arcane on Bombardment. There's still two I'm thinking about. Not sure I'm going to put them in right now. I am going to try and find some way, given all my creatures haste at instant or sorcery speed. Um, so the deck will list will reflect that, and I'll make a note in the comments. You've probably read it down below already. A bit of luck, but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and tell your friends about my channel. We're sitting at 115 people at the moment as I record this. Um, I'd really like to start getting up to like 200. So if you've got any friends who play Magic, enjoy Commander point them in my direction and they can leave me some comments and tell me what decks they want to see me cover um this is gonna this week after next next week hopefully you'll start to see a lot more stuff about frexia or will be one i'm just waiting for it to come out on mtgo so i can start building the deck so that's it for now thanks for watching and i'll see you soon hopefully on my stream on twitch take care bye